BlackTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hang.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn to awaken your divine intuition and open your human heart. Sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Sarah. I'm Sarah Wiseman. Today, uh, sorry we had to miss the show uh, last week, uh, as a lot of you guys know, uh, weather was crazy all over the U.S. and here in Oregon, where I live, we had a pretty mighty ice storm that took down thousands and thousands of trees. They're calling it the worst disaster that the place that I live uh, has ever seen. And so we are under national disaster and I was out of power for seven days and some people are still out of power here in Oregon. And of course we know that other people um, across the US are suffering also. So um, nature is making itself known. Um, I always felt that the trees were my friends and I still feel this, I still feel a massive heart connection to the trees, but uh, understanding that in the midst of such, you know, we've had the fires, we've had now the ice storms, and in the midst of all of life, everything changes, everything grows. And uh, when it gets too big or too old, some of these massive oak trees just fell to their, felled to the ground. Um, you know, it's this constant, constant change. This is what we are here to experience. Nothing stays the same. Nothing is as it was the flow is, you know, sort of the way of things. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. I do want to talk about our topic for today. What does it mean to surrender to the universe? Learn why ego, I have my notes here, ego is not a worthy guide and is no match for the wisdom of source. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And last week, we would have talked about, does law of attraction work? <laughs> and we're going to talk about a new law uh, beyond law of attraction, which is, of course, law of flow. And these two subjects relate perfectly to each other. I want to just cover a little bit about this uh, so that you'll get what you missed last week. And I want to remark on today is Free Readings Tuesday. And so you can go uh, call into the show, 844-390-8255, 844-390-8255. And I am super happy to answer your questions. And these can be, you know, psychic questions about your own life. I'm happy to answer that. But what I love to answer also is for those of you who are intuitives or mystics or empaths or sensitives or seekers, you know, what's your experience in the world right now? How are your gifts opening up or maybe they're a little stuck or maybe you're experiencing some new things or maybe weird stuff has started to happen. So I'm especially interested in this conversation for people, uh, all the sensitives out there who are feeling this, this change and this swirl of everything that we've been going through. So again, call in 844-390-8255-844-390-8255 to Free Readings Tuesday. Um, let's see, housekeeping, what we have going on now, uh, uh, we've got our March course has just opened, and so every month we do a spotlight, a monthly spotlight, you can sign up 
for the $15 courses anytime, but when we do them together as a group, it's more fun. So our March course is called the Chakra Project. Um, seven, uh, something like <laughs> seven mantras for healing. So this course is actually created by uh, my husband, Dr. Steve Koch, and he is a um, master healer um, for, for decades and decades. And he is a sound healer musician. And so he has created this astounding course, the Chakra Project that teaches you how to open all of your chakras. Um, and you can do this by using mantra that he has recorded and also some mudra, which are hand motions. And so these techniques, you know, it seems pretty simple. Oh, we'll just go into meditation and do a mantra, but what happens vibrationally, how these things begin to open you are just astounding. You know, one of the immediate things that always happens for me when I'm doing this type of sound healing or mantra work is the emotions get released. It's just the first little tip. You know, we think that we're going to go up into other dimensions and we do, but anything um, blocked in the heart or that needs to be opened always comes to the surface. And when we're doing this kind of clearing, that's where growth can happen. If, if everything's stuck, we just sit there in this stuck pattern. When we clear energetically the chakras, things start to move and we can move along in our lives. So the chakra project, it's $15. It's on the website, sarahwiseman.com. The other thing to do is very soon, next week, we will have our March Divine Astrology Report. And if you would like to receive this free to your inbox, uh, you can go to um, sarahwiseman.com and you can go ahead and sign up for that. It's free, no obligation. Sign up if you like it, keep going. If you don't, uh, unsubscribe. Um, it's a monthly channeled report that I do. And a lot of you guys have been saying, I've been doing this for about a year. Um, so it's pretty interesting process of going into divine space and asking the guides, you know, what's happening, what's, what's going to be coming along for us in the coming month. So let's just look at a couple of these ideas. And again, free readings Tuesday, 844-390-8444. Eight four four three nine zero eight two five five, and we're going to be going to the phones in just a moment. But let's talk about. So, the, we're going to combine the two episodes. What is law of attraction, and what is law of flow? These are the same, the same idea of surrendering to the universe. Law of attraction, which has been around a long time secret, uh, thoughts become things, um, think, think and grow rich, Napoleon Hill, very famous. So all of these ideas are the, have the concept that we um, can, can attract what we want. We can bring it to us. If we want money, we can attract it with the power of our thoughts. If we want fame, we can attract it. If we want a new house, we can attract it. If we want a new job or a new car or a, a love relationship, we can just put on our magnetizing magic and attract it, right? So that's been around a long time. Um, but where we are now in terms of our evolution, that is uh, an older system. You know, some of you are still using it. You love it. Great. That's fine. That working for you. But a lot of you are like, I'm using that and I'm not really seeing what I thought I would, or I used it and it didn't work, or I used it and I, it did work and I did not like the results. So this is because law of attraction is based on attracting what you want from the space of your ego, mind, personality, thoughts become things. And where we have evolved to is we're not trying to attract to us 
It's, it's like we don't know enough as ego mind personality to, to know what we really want. We, we actually don't know what our best highest potentiality is. So instead, the new way, the better, interesting, uh, more fulfilling, more meaningful way is law of flow in which we allow the universe to attract us to our highest potentiality. So it's different. Instead of grasping what we want, demanding, I deserve, I need, I get, I want, we're allowing the universe to be in charge and taking us to our highest potentiality. And the universe is always attempting to take us to highest potentiality in terms of our soul growth, our expansion as beings, in terms of our understanding ourselves as souls. And so when you are sitting around in law of attraction saying, I want this house, maybe the universe is saying, yeah, we'll give you the house if you, that's what you want. But actually the house is going to be a big hassle for you and you're going to get stuck there and you're, you're not going to have the experiences that you actually need. And what, what we would really like you to, uh, to be attracted to this is just an example. Maybe it's resonating for some of you out there, but what we would like you to be attracted to is we want you to go travel or we want you to have an apartment so that you have uh, less need to work and, and then you have more free time or, or we want you to go do house sharing with someone so that you'll have some interesting roommates that you're destined to meet as soul partners. So again, we grasp law of attraction and it doesn't mean we're grasping the best thing for us. It just means we've got this idea in our mind or ego of what we think we want. And of course, so much of our mind, ego, personality is really running on mainstream scripts or dominant culture scripts or the, the, you know, the shoulds we had from when we were kids. <laughs> this is how it's got to be. Um, when we open it up to this idea that the universe has things well in hand and that we are being attracted to our highest potentiality, we can just follow along in the stream of flow. And we know we're in stream of flow when everything is easy and effortless and fun, even in, even in times of such world trauma that we're in, there is a path that's e easier and smoother. Um, and law of flow, allowing ourselves to be attracted to, and again, allowing ourselves. And this comes to the idea of this week. So this week's idea, what does it mean to surrender to the universe? What does it mean? And what it means is that we let go of needing the ego to be in charge. It's a hard thing, right? We just let it go and we allow what is happening now to be what's happening. We let go of our ideas of how things need to be or how things should be or um, you know where we think it should happen and we're just surrendering to the universe and letting the universe drop in those synchronicities and strands and spiritual breadcrumbs, we just follow along. And I started working this way. Now I have a, I was joking with Cameron, our, the producer earlier today about my need to have control over every little detail because I'm not very good with details. So it helps me. But when I started to let go of the bigger picture like, what am I supposed to do? What am I here for? And just let things emerge instead of trying to create them myself. That's when things started to get really interesting. The universe, as it turned out, had a lot of surprises in store for me and has these for you also. And uh, life just became so much less constrained and so much more interesting and so much more fulfilling to follow 
the synchronicities to follow the strands and just let things emerge rather than have a preconceived idea that I was working to, toward. So let's go to the phones now. And again, you can call in to Free Readings Tuesday. It's 844-390-8255. That's 844-390-8255. And it looks like we have Shauna calling from Denver. Shauna, welcome. Let's see, I can't hear Shauna yet. Can, can you hear me? Shauna? Yes, now I can. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, well, good. <laughs> so Yay. nice to have you on the show. Yeah. What can I help you. you out with today? Um, I've been trying to sell my house and move, and I'm wondering if you see a when you see me moving, maybe, or am I not supposed to move? That I'm kind of starting to question that. Yeah. So, um. And you live in the Denver area. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting because um, lots of people are moving or wanting to move, um, and lots of people are. <laughs> are wanting to move to Denver, right? So, or Denver Boulder. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, hearing that, like, yeah, I mean, the, that's probably the second spot I'm hearing the most about. The first is more like the Santa Fe, Sedona, uh, you know, that Arizona, New Mexico, that kind of area is, is first what I'm hearing, right. where people are trying to go. Um, why are you trying to move? Because I, I do wonder if if maybe um, you would think that things would have happened already. So uh, tell me right. more about what your intention is. Well, my intention is to buy a five acre farm and open up a metaphysical school mm -hmm. and a healing center. And so I'm looking to the Midwest because the, the property is a little cheaper there mm -hmm. so I could buy it with my equity so that's my intention but um I think I'm being told something different now <laughs> because yeah. it's not selling it's not happening <laughs> and have you lived on um have you lived in the country before um I lived in Illinois before yes before I came out to Denver but I mean like on acreage have you done that lifestyle no, before? No. Yeah. Uh, now, if you didn't go to do this, this project, what's your second? Um, I think I'm, I, I think I'm feeling the nudge is not like we, it's so interesting. We were just talking about letting the universe show us, you know, where we're really going. If you right. weren't going to do this project, what's your second, what was, what's the next idea that you have? Well, part of it is um, it's kind of like a holistic healing thing that I want and to also bring um, music to do out, outside concerts, you know, mm -hmm. on the farm mm -hmm. and, um, and teach people how to, um, you know, get them growing their own food and taking it all the way to canning and because it's a loss. Yes, right. Um, art and and people are going to have to go back to this. I see that that it's going to be a need for us that we have to take charge of our own food. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought that the universe would be supporting me. In this. <laughs> yeah, I think what I'm seeing is, um, you know, that game. What I'm getting so when I get a question, I put up what I call a guiding vision. It, like the people that train with me and stuff know what I'm talking about, but I put up a clairvoyant vision in my third eye space. And I also listen to from the guides and it's, it's absolutely feeling, um, I'm getting the vision of, you know, the old game hopscotch where you throw your, your, um, little rock onto the hopscotch form and then you have to hop around and skip particular squares where the rock is and it's feeling oh, like okay. there's something about um 
the direct path from you to five acres is too hard. Like it sounds good on paper, the, the vision itself is very inspiring, I commend you. And it may be too much to take that jump all at once, just the sheer idea of getting used to five acres and getting used to country living and also trying to attract people to the Midwest, which isn't necessarily a, um, an easy, easy space to get lots of <laughs> metaphysical people easily there. So right. what I'm seeing is looking at doing this a little bit more in stages. And I know maybe it's not, you know, what you were hoping for, but it's almost like if you could go and spend some time working with somebody else that's already doing part of this, either as working for them or just almost like doing an internship and just kind of watching how they've got it, like almost like partnering with some other people first before you take the jump. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm hearing is there are some skills you don't have that if you go there and try and create their wheel all by yourself, it's not going to work. But if you do a little more training um, with people already doing some of the stuff already, then you're going to have success. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm not, I'm also not sure that the Midwest is where you're going to go. It feels like, like when I look on the map, it seems like you're more West than the Midwest. So, yeah, I would originally was looking at like the Northwest or yeah. then West Washington area. Yeah, absolutely. But, but that, the I'm getting that kind of, were, yeah, were I'm getting higher. that, I'm getting that kind of Washington area. Um, okay. I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, it's maybe called one area I'm getting is the Skagit Valley, but I'm not sure, but it's, uh, Washington is what's coming up for me too. So here's okay. how I would approach it. Um, do you have a meditation practice? Like, do you know how to work with your guides? Yeah, I just feel like I've been so uptight that I don't feel like I'm connecting right lately. Yeah. <laughs> so that's <laughs> it's been a lot of stress, a lot of strain, and and kind of also the feeling a lot of us have, myself included, is just like, I gotta move. I got something's gotta change, and that's that's because all the constrictions we've had from you know, yeah. the pandemic and uh, it, it's like, we want to create change, but change isn't here yet. So um, I do think it's possible to sell your house um, in like by, let's see, March, like by April or May, that seems easy, but it feels like then there's going to be almost like a gap, a gap time or even a gap year where you're partnering and searching and kind of traveling around looking for the next step it's not going to be sell your place pop into the five acres go it's it's going to be a more meandering okay. journey and the reason is because right. there's things you need to know so that you will be successful with your vision later okay it's pretty exciting it's pretty exciting. Um, it's just that there's a lot. Right, of, and I've wanted this for so long. Yeah. So it's like, I'm really to the point of total frustration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, and so I know that's blocking my flow. Yeah. So I think that what I would do is take it into meditation and say, okay, what if I just sold it and understood I'm doing my plan, but I'm going to let the universe guide me on my plan more than me trying to figure it out that. in a certain way and that and allowing that it's going to take some time to to re okay. resource it well keep us posted i appreciate you calling in and um it's a great plan and it well, sounds like a you. very I interesting appreciate project you. yeah thank you okay we're going to take a okay. quick yeah we're going to take a quick break and then we're taking more free readings tuesday lines are open so you can call into eight four four three nine zero 
8255 and we'll be back in just a moment. with more Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. Call in. Free readings Tuesday to 844-390-8255. And it looks like we have Janice calling from Tennessee. Janice, welcome. Thank you very much. It's yeah. wonderful to be able to talk with you, Sarah. Uh, thank you. And we love to hear your beautiful voice. I, I love the Tennessee and oh. tennis, Tennessee, I don't know, oh, <laughs> the so accent. Great. Yes, uh, wonderful. Well, thank tell you. me, what can I help you out with today? Or what's going on in your life? Well, I, ha I have um, I had several years of lots of turmoil. And none of my family is speaking to me. Um, although I have what, what propelled some of this, my, I have, my son passed away four and a half years ago. Uh, and that really propelled me into seeking, wanting more. And I told, I told the first person that answered the phone, I, I, I did, I did start looking into your things and have taken several classes. And I, after my son passed away, I, I just wanted so much to be able to connect as much as I could. And this whole thing about having guides and angels, maybe I could, I could, I could have bought, but I, I was, I was just getting irritated. Sarah is what I was getting because I thought, really, I'm supposed to just know this person and I was just getting mad at God all over again too yeah and I had to I needed to go this is this was a few months after he had uh been gone and I had to go do some I had to meet a workman at his house we were getting it I was getting it ready to rent and so forth and um I had listened to one of the tapes about finding meeting your guides and so forth and then it just nothing happened and i'm just was, and i was just mad and so i got in the car i had to get over there and i said really god really i'm supposed to know what this being looks like and I, it just sounds like this is ridiculous and, and when i drove in my son's driveway the next door neighbor's little four-year-old boy a little african-american cutest little kid with 
plaid boots on, they were washing the car, came out and it smacked me in the face. That was that was that was who I was looking for. Uh, uh-huh. And and I I have I have some of us have still been in a bit of a milk glass white world. I have some African American friends now, but that was several years ago. And it was the sweetest thing. I know I know God spoke to me and that little guy is really special to me. Hmm. So your son's passing. How old was your son when he passed? How old was he? Mm-hmm. 42. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that sometimes lo- inconceivable loss moves us to change in ways that we couldn't ever imagine that we would change. And I think yes. it's extremely common to be super mad <laughs> at the universe mm-hmm. and at God. And, you know, it, yes, of course, because we're faced with the pain. And yet we also know it's part of the bigger picture. And at the time, it just feels so unfair it feels so unfair that we have to mm-hmm. go through it um but in this right. case and none of it made sense and it's not that it really makes sense now but it is um i'm in such a different place yeah, yeah. i'm really grateful for the experiences but we do there is one thing a financial thing with with his estate that's never been finished you see anything happening with that it just it's bothers me that it's never been taken care of yeah well so I want to go back to this idea that um you said that you weren't speaking to any of your family or fighting with them after all of this happened and so I want to just kind of put Mm -hmm. what's happening for you into a like a bigger perspective what's really happening is that your son's passing um acted as sometimes People will have an accident or they'll get ill or there'll be a big trauma, like the loss of someone. And this will open them up. And this is what's happening to you. And, you know, if if you don't connect with guides and angels, that's no problem. You can connect with nature or your heart or just Mm -hmm. everything. You know, it, it doesn't have to be this particular way. It's a way that I like, but not everybody's the same. Um, but right. when you become awake and then your family is staying kind of, you know, stuck where they were or uh, not mm-hmm. awake in the same way as you. So this is going to take some time and it may never, it may be a gift to have separation from your family because then you're finally free mm-hmm. to explore some other ideas and to live a different way, especially if you're in a, a family that was kind of having just one way as you know our way or the highway <laughs> kind of family uh yeah it, yeah it and, may I be- have, and because of him and someone that i you know when, when i knew i sat and watched television for a year mm-hmm. and i knew he wouldn't want that and and i have heard from him and i do hear from him and i have a completely different life yes. from what i had before and i have met friends that are like-minded and I'm mm-hmm. in a small little church with really open people yeah. and it, I have a really completely different life that I really like yeah you know um and, so, and love the people around me so yeah and so don't worry too much about I, I don't, yeah don't worry about the family just let that like don't even try and convince or fight or just let it be. It's almost no, like I, I haven't con yeah, a couple have said no, I am just I'm backing away. So I, I've honored that and I'm not trying to do anything. Yeah. So it's as if you've gone on a journey or moved to a different country and they haven't come with you and they're on their own journey, so it'll be okay. Now, really right. bri- really briefly, tell me what the financial thing is, because I don't see any issue there. Uh, that feels super neutral or complete already, but tell me briefly what that is. Okay, his, um, he, uh, his 
estate and pension and all that has never been finalized. Mm -hmm. It's all just kind of hanging in the air. And God bless her. My little daughter-in-law, they were separated for a couple of years. But I love her dearly, but she can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. And she had, was dating someone else. She had been gone for a couple of, they'd been separated for a couple of years, but remained friends. And they're, they're both just very kind, wonderful people. My son was just the finest person I've ever known. And so they, they were friends, but they were not legally divorced. Mm -hmm. And so she is the only one that can do that. And she actually had been dating someone else who ended up still committing suicide while she was on the phone with him. Oh. So she and has she's been turned every which way to yeah. and she she doesn't she doesn't want me to contact her either. I love her dearly, but I've left yeah. her alone the last couple of years. Yeah, she's in trauma still. Um, and is there yeah. any reason that you would have money coming in from this estate that you think? Or um, yes, because that because she and I talked about it. Okay. Because she didn't want any of his things. That was the kind of person that she is. Mm -hmm. And um but before, I and mean, all of that happened to her before she was able to do the paperwork. Yeah. And she does want some of that pension, and, and, and that's fine with me. I don't think either one of us are selfish in that regard. I just really think it should be finished up. It's, he worked for the state, and they wanted it finished, and so now it's just all kind of in limbo. Yeah. I think that, um, what are we in now? We're almost in March. I wish I could say earlier, but I don't think anything gets wrapped up until July. And it's almost like she needs the, the hope of spring to come. Almost like she she's in depression, she's in trauma. She needs a little bit mm -hmm. more time before she can face it. But then when she faces it, it's quite simple. Uh, it's pretty cut and dried, really. Um, and it really, it can, really can be. And see, yeah. I am considering um, actually talking to an estate lawyer to mm -hmm. to talk yeah. her into. I think so. Um, I, what I'm seeing is that, like, you can talk to is that someone. Not a bad thing. Yeah, you can talk to someone and get advice on any claim that you have, and then you might even um, suggest to her that she uses the, as the, as a similar attorney or the same attorney. Um, but that is the only, like you don't talk to her about any details. Uh, you're just offering him her the mm -hmm. resource and that's it. And you're pretty much, you don't talk to her. You're, it's more painful for her to be in contact with you. And so it's a gift for Why? you to not be in contact and just trust it all works out, mm -hmm. it, uh, but nothing really happens till July. If you press earlier, it's going to backfire. So um, connect okay. with an attorney for your yeah. own information, but then just kind of sit with it. Okay, Janice, things yeah, are. I'm I so, don't want I'm, to hurt her, you know, more. Yeah, and exactly. She has said, I don't want to have to think about them. Yes. Yeah, um, she needs some time. So, so Jan uh, Janice, I'm going to yeah. let you. I'm going to let. I'm going to let you go. So. Thank you so much for calling in, and uh, uh, we appreciate. And thank I'm you. So Do you happy see anything that, about my daughter and my relationship? That's the only one I would like to have. In you were going to be separate from fact. family for a while, so just go with that and trust okay. that everyone needs time. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for All calling right. in. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Janice brings up some really good points that uh, you know when we have all this trauma. Things don't say the same, they change. And uh, this idea of the universe taking us to our highest potentiality in her case, uh, taking her to more opening, more expansion, there is the temporary loss of the family connection, but that's because the family has to grow, the individuals in the family has to grow either in similar ways to Janice or in different ways. We have time for more callers. Free readings Tuesday, 844-390-8255. Lines are open. If you call in now, you'll get a spot. 844-390-8255. And I think we've got 
uh, Kira, I think that's right, uh, from Minnesota. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. You're oh, welcome. So Is it Kira? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, it's Kira. Okay. Perfect. Kira what can I help you out with today? So I'm just in a big, like, state of transition. I'm seven months pregnant and just found out that um, I will most likely be um, transitioning from my job at the school where I'm working as a kindergarten teacher. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just really like in this kind of inquiry of um, like a natural transition. I'm just open to what is to come, but I'm also trying not to step into like the fear mentality of losing security and losing what I know and my like the contributions that I've put in towards this towards this role. So. Mm -hmm. Is this your first child? This is, yes, it's yeah. your first child. Excellent. Yep, do in April. Yeah, nice. we're really excited. Um, yeah, that's super fun. Um, and so the job is sort of going away. It's not, uh, it's not there as you thought it would be. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's in a state of flux. So I, I could apply for a job in a different school in the same district. Um, but there's, there's movement, there's opening. Yeah. And um, I'm just wondering where, like where I should put my attention. And if I would, should really. Uh, yeah, would this job be for, for spring or for fall? It's for fall. Okay. So I'm completing the school year. Okay. I would be completing the school year, but I'm thinking about whether I should go back to teaching in the fall. Yeah. Um, it feels like the universe has given you um, a gift of having less pressure with this new child coming. I don't feel that there's any yeah. reason that there's any, you know, dire reason, like the baby's fine, everything works fine, there's no problem there. However, um, having a, a first ch child is really, at least for me, uh, and I had, I raised four kids, but uh, at least for me, it was super intense. And having more free time, uh, even if it's for, you know, a couple months or a year or whatever you can get is pretty amazing. So it feels like mm. this has come because it's a gift. And I think that if you were to apply, you would have something by fall in some way, in some district, you know, in some kind of position. But you may want to, if you're financially able, just to kind of linger with that until you know, the baby arrives and you have a better sense of how you're going to be feeling. It feels like you might have um, a year off and you are incredibly <laughs> happy that you choose that, even though it's financially, you know, a little tighter. Um, and I don't, I'm not saying this from any, you know, moral position of, what I think like women should stay home or women should work. It's, it's actually, it's not coming from that. I'm just looking at the pictures that I see of you and I'm not seeing you. I'm seeing you, if you go back in fall being pretty stressed and I'm seeing you, if you give yourself more time, um, other things open up and it's a different situation that's better. So how does that mm. feel to you, that idea of just giving yourself some more time of not working? Yeah, that is, um, that's a big opening for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very different, yeah, very different than my um, kind of current state of mentality um, was like, like just work, 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 you know, and 
and I recently just like finished graduate school too. So it's been a lot of, yeah, yeah it's been just a lot of focus on. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it is really true that with, a, well, at least for me, it was very true that this idea that you, you know, when the baby, when the baby comes, you don't sleep and it's hard to take a shower and, you know, it's, it's, it is a lot of transition. So allowing yourself to really ease into that would be a pretty amazing, amazing gift instead of, you know, piling on more of the pressure and piling on more of the stress. It also feels like, what did you do graduate school? Was that for teaching also? No, I studied holistic health. Ah, and okay, I've, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been kind of wondering how to transition yeah. into more of um, like my sole purpose and just work that makes a larger impact. Yeah, so that's what um, I was seeing also this opening, this not working, then you're able to have the time to create either something you do by distance or something you do part-time or some kind of um, intuitive or holistic health, uh, you know, in this field, some kind of offering along with the new child. Um, they're both sole purpose. Being a teacher is a sole purpose. Being a holistic healer is a sole purpose. It's just it feels like this gap, like when we talk about the universe setting things in motion and following, that is sort of where things are going. So um, it's okay to let the teaching go and to, and to move toward the other field that you're called to. And that's what will happen. It'll be pretty easy to set something up that's really flexible, that um, allows you to work with, you know, raising a family and so forth. So yeah. And you don't need to know what it is now. The main thing is you're going to have the baby and take some time off. And then as you have the free time, it will start to become clear to you. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. I just need to, like I heard the news today and I was like, whoa. I yeah. also wanted to um, uh, just share. I um, So I write a mindful, a mindful Monday post for all of my staff mm -hmm. and I share inspiration from your wisdom and mm. your oracle cards ah wonderful and, um, it, it, yeah and it resonates with so many people and I've been doing this for a year and um, it just has uplifted our community a lot so oh good good so, well people need support yeah. that's for sure hey thank you for calling yeah. in appreciate your call and good luck to you it's all going to be good it's all going to be good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to close out today this idea of letting the universe lead. Uh, this is from Messages from the Divine. When you let the universe lead, you exist in divine flow. Thus, you can allow this to happen without fear, without worry, or without need to plan and plot and control. To live in flow will take you so much further, so much faster that you might ever create by yourself. To harness yourself to the power of pure light will create in you such greater understanding, such greater joy than what you can build in the constructs of your own human mind. Imagine if you are an ant working on an anthill and you are taken up suddenly into human perspective and you see suddenly how big and fast and extraordinary this life experience can be. Things you cannot even imagine are possible. Things you cannot even comprehend are real. Miracles are the way things are all the time. As you begin to learn how to be in the now, you are automatically and intrinsically placed at the very center of flow, the marvelous river of energy that carries you to your next experience and your next and your next, each experience broadening and opening and expanding yourself as a being into the greatest understanding and experiencing of light. When you let the universe lead, 
you allow yourself to let go of control, which is, of course, all illusion, and attach to the true reality of flow. And in this way, you are automatically brought to experiences that are far greater, bigger, richer than you might have chosen on your own or that you might have ever been able to comprehend or to imagine. The universe contains mysteries and miracles that are not in your imagination, and yet these are also available to you when you choose to live in flow. And that's from my book, Messages from the Divine. Okay, guys, sign up for the Chakra Project, our course for March, $15 at sarahwiseman.com. Sign up for Divine Astrology, our free March channeling direct to your inbox at sarahwiseman.com. And I'm uh, going to be with you next week for more Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman and more free readings Tuesday. Thanks for listening.